Minister, I think the response to everything that we've raised in terms of targets or projections and so on is to say, oh, we don't need these things in Ireland. We're already the subject of EU uh, targets, but of course that's been completely blind to the reality that while we may be subject to those targets, we're also on target to miss them and be well off the radar in terms of achieving them in any meaningful way by 2020, which actually means that the Irish taxpayer is going to be uh, the subject of massive fines, apart from the fact that the Irish humanity and the world's humanity, if you like, is going to be jeopardised by, by our failure uh, to, to come to terms with these issues. Now, as it stands, the bill doesn't actually require the national mitigation plan to actually achieve anything. And that's the reality of it as it stands. So what this amendment is seeking to do is that it would be a requirement in the plan to include projected national emissions as a goal. And I don't think that's unreasonable. In actual fact, it makes perfect logical sense. And by the government refusing, if you like, to take this onto account, it really is the same type of mentality that we had in the earlier um, amendment when the minister came in and was basically quite happy to railroad through, for the government of the day, to railroad through whatever was put forward and undermine uh, participative democracy of this House here. And I do think that Deputy Wallace is correct. I mean, we are dealing here with very serious issues in reality, in some ways, with the, with the huge future of humanity. Even those at higher levels or elements of the capitalist system are coming to grasp that this, our, our world is jeopardised by our inability uh, to deal with this. But the problem we have is while we're talking one thing, the reality in what we're delivering is quite the opposite. And we need to be much more radical in our thinking and we need to be much more definitive in the plan that we put forward. And the problem is, is that there are some, um, I suppose, allusions to a way forward in the, in the bill that's before us, but no meat and no substance. And when you weigh that bill up then with all of the other actions that the government has stood over, the reality is that we know that this country, far from reaching our targets, is going further back on the road to achieving those targets. And that would be why we would say austerity is actually un contributing to this. In fairness, the group in Canada, headed up by Naomi Klein and the, and the LEAP manifesto that they've put forward based on really tackling climate change in a serious way, they say in that manifesto, which they put to public representatives, that austerity itself is a fossilised form of thinking that has become a threat to life on Earth. And what they mean by that is that, you know, by systematically attacking low carbon sectors like education and healthcare, as the government has done, starving public transport, uh, forcing reckless energy privatisations and so on. That's a fossilised form of thinking, which is a threat to life on earth. And we can draw parallels here in our system on that. They talk about needing the money for that great transformation in how society is uh, ordered. And we need the right policies to do that. So, like ending fossil fuel subsidies, a financial transactions tax would deal with this, increased resource royalties, higher income taxes on corporations and wealthy individuals, a progressive carbon tax, cuts to military spending and so on. All of these measures are actually real producer pays measures which could tackle uh, the emissions that we're seeking uh, to deal with, but instead we have a waffly fluffy bill that doesn't actually set out achieving anything and meanwhile other policies are being implemented which ensure that we won't reach our targets. We're actually heading in the opposite uh, direction. So I think this amendment is very worthy and should be included because it actually measures what we should be doing and puts it in some ways, uh, uh, you know, anchors this plan to some form of uh, reality which would then have an impact on other aspects of government policy. Thank you, Deputy A. Deputy Boyd Barrett.